What is happening, y'all? Fighting Cowboy here, and welcome on back to our Elden Ring coverage. Now, coming off the end of the last episode, we are making our way into an entirely new zone, and that is Kaled. Now, you can see we only have a little bit of it uncovered for now. We're going to be focusing on getting both of those map markers this episode, so you can see where we're going. And we're also going to start things off with getting a couple of upgrade materials, smithing stones, because as we are going into a harder zone, we, of course, want to make sure that we are preparing properly. Uh, now, just to recap some things, at this point in the game, you should be roughly between 60 and 65. Uh, we're currently at 62. Just if you're trying to follow along with my stats, we are at 40 Vigor, which is the first soft cap still. We have enough mine for our Caden Ashes uh, Endurance. I feel comfortable at 25. And right now, we're focusing on strength for any uh, extra runes that we get. So, the first thing we're going to do is actually just go straight south from here. And you can see that there is a cave right here. Those caves are always worthwhile to visit early on, just because of the upgrade materials. Uh, between that cave and another cave that we're going to go to, we're going to be able to come into contact with quite a few. Um, briefly, just to talk about preserving boluses, as we just picked these up. Uh, we picked up the recipe to make these in a previous episode, but these are going to alleviate Scarlet Rot, which is a status effect you'll find a lot here in Caled. So, grabbing those five right there is certainly useful. Um, we'll be coming across the material you need to craft more in this zone as well. Just grabbing those golden rooms. And then right over here, we're actually going to drop on down into this cave. Now, if you look, you can see there's a little bit of an approach here and some guards. Uh, not that they, they don't really matter. You can certainly fight them if you want. But instead, you can just drop this way and we can head right on it. So, entering Gale Tunnel, let's go ahead and put on our lantern. Uh, and with the two tunnels here, if you want, now would actually be a great time to swap back over to that blunt weapon if you've been leveling it up. Um, for me, while my Zweihander is at plus 10, this is only at plus 9. Um, this thing will do quite well because as we go into this area, we're going to be fighting a lot of miners. And you may remember from our previous parts, those miners are harder to kill with certain weapons. The hammer will do an excellent job of just chopping right through them. And we're just going to go uh, clockwise here. Same technique that we've used in cruising through uh, a lot of the caverns. Go ahead and rest at the grace. There's a big squid that's in this room. Um, if you haven't fought a big squid before, these enemies, they, they look very dangerous, but they're actually quite easy once it gets down to it. Alright, now that it's done being angry at us, we're just going to run and jump, and we'll hit it. And there we go. So once you get a critical on the squid, you can actually just continually get these. After the first one, just charge up a heavy. And you'll be able to just do this all the way until it's dead, as long as you have a heavier weapon. Uh, if you're using something like a katana, it may take a couple hits to stun it like this, but if you're following along with this guy exactly and using a strength weapon, you can pretty much just lock them down like that. You can see exactly why I said they weren't going to be too much of a challenge. But there we go with the smithing stone 4. Go ahead and pick up more over here. And there's the Cross Naginata, a excellent, excellent dexterity weapon. That's a long range spear, so it pokes, but it also has a bleed on it. Very popular strategy, especially in PvP, is to use two of them. It's extremely dangerous. And we're just essentially going around. We're going to just take a loop through this entire thing, killing everything we see. Occasionally, some of these soldiers will sound the horn. 
we're not going to be that concerned with that. They're dying so fast in here, it's not really a, a problem for us. Get those smithing stones that are up on the wall. Okay, we're looking good and cleared out here. Grab that. real fast and then moving on into the next part Wild Swings is such a funny Ashivore For those that are curious where that came from, uh, you can pick that up on the way up to Margit from killing one of the shiny beetles. Very nice for, for hammer-based weapons, stuff like the brick hammer. Uh, it's extremely, extremely brutal Ash of War. Because the, those hammer hits, they, you know, as you've seen, they do a lot of stun damage, so... that one. Uh, so the boss is right in there. Don't worry about that just yet. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and you'll find Alexander here. I would suggest running through his dialogue if you're trying to accomplish his quest, which it is quite a, there's a valuable quest to do. If you get all the way through it, you get a talisman, which will increase the damage of your Ashes of War. So very useful talisman for the end game. Uh, we have that grace right next to the boss. And if you go out this way, this is actually going to pop you out into Limgrave. Let's see. So, you can actually come here from Limgrave, but that door that we opened is locked. So, you would get in here, you'd grab that grace, and then you'd be unable to advance. Uh, but going on in, we are going to take on our very first Magma Worm. Now, this is an enemy that you're going to encounter quite a few times in Elden Ring. Um, they're not particularly dangerous, but they they can give you some difficulty, uh, just depending on, on you know whether or not you're you're able to stun it really as you can see it's like it likes to kind of just crawl around uh, one of the hard things about this fight is that that lava can actually do a fair amount of damage so what i like to do is try and get in on its legs or the head if it leaves itself exposed We didn't take our flask. If you can't hit the head, there we go. So I said, if you can hit the head, you might be able to bring it down for a critical, but it's a little bit finicky at times getting the head off. It really depends on uh, the positioning of the worm and. Uh, that blade slam is probably the one attack that you actually need to be, be careful about, as that can do quite a bit of damage, but it, I mean, it's a pretty obvious tell when he's going for it. You can see he'll back up like that. And you can, of course, pull a uh, Ash and Summon out. I just didn't have the... Uh, didn't have the FP to summon that and do wild strikes, so I didn't bother. The nice thing is that even if you were to die to this thing, we have a grace that's you know, literally four feet away or so. There we go. Some nice pokes. So on top of getting a dragon heart, you also earn the moon veil for that kill, an extremely powerful weapon uh, for dexterity and int players. Probably one of the better weapons in the game. 
Uh, very, very good. But from here, let's go ahead and shoot back on over to round table hold. We're going to go ahead and spend a lot of uh, what we just picked up to snag some upgrades for our primary weapon. Which in this case, for me, is the Zweihander. So we're going to strengthen. Beautiful. Now we are up into the Smithing Stone 5 category with it. So we're going to shoot back over here to Rockview Balcony. And the next thing we're going to do is grab a shiny beetle. We're going to come across a new sword, which is also one of the best swords in the game. Um, so we're going to basically be taking a, uh, a trek right along this road. But everything that, that we are looking for, it'll all be right along the road. So start with the run here. Uh, these enemies aren't particularly dangerous. They, they do kind of explode, uh, but if you just want to feel kind of epic, feel free to go for it. Now, as we come up here, you can see there are some dogs. These dogs can be quite aggressive, uh, and they're probably one of the scarier things for you to contend with here in Caleb. But we are going to get that beetle, and give us flame, and then we're going to run and jump over here. We'll open this up. See the dogs stuck on each other. We'll grab the greatsword. And then we're going to continue down the road, just ignoring the dogs for now. You can fight them if you want. They are quite dangerous. Um, right over here, we have another grace. Now, briefly, just to talk about greatsword, uh, this is probably one of the best weapons in the game. Uh, if you want to do a strength build, it's extremely strong. Uh, you'll see this a lot in PvP. Uh, the main reason that we are still working with the Psyhander, as opposed to this, even though this is stronger, uh, is the weight difference here. Let's see, 15.523. So even if we were to off this as well, let's see, we need to take off both of our shields to even be able to be in a medium weight category. Uh, pretty soon, though, you're going to be like really coming into a lot of upgrade mats. So if you want to switch on over to Greatsword now, you certainly could. Uh, it is very good, very iconic, a bit reminiscent of Berserk, one of the, the main inspirations behind Dark Souls. My One of my personal favorite strength weapons, uh, but it is it is heavier. It does have a higher strength requirement. So, food for thought, more than likely with this build, I believe we're going to actually transition uh, into a int strength sword, which we get in just a little bit. But so before we go down, what we are going to do next is actually go up north. Now, I know I said up north can be quite scary, so we're going to follow exactly along and just do what I do. So you can see on the compass, we are headed directly east right now. And there is a small spot where we can hop and basically get up north for now. And then we're just going to do a couple things there. Right here, you can see we're able to cross that gap. We'll go ahead and grab this. And then we're going to run over here. This is going to get us the map for the upper half. Uh, now, there's a lot of dragons up in here in the, the Grail area. There's actually a very large dragon that's like, well, let me just grab the map and I'll show you exactly where. See, the area is called Dragon Barrow. Um, but right on over here in Dragon Barrow is a very, very extremely large dragon. You can kind of see a little bit of it right around my head. Uh, that, that big white thing is actually part of a dragon. Either that or actually that, that might be the skull. Um, either way, if you want to go over there, if you kill a couple of dragons in front of it, the big dragon will die and it will give you a ton of runes. Um, alternatively, you can kind of get around its back legs and whack on it for about 10-15 minutes. I'd suggest using a weapon that will inflict bleed, uh, but you'll get the same result. And that dragon does have one of the incantations that we need. We're going to actually go tackle it a bit later, but if you're low on runes, that is something that may be worthwhile to do. Speaking of runes, hopefully you have a couple, because we are coming up on a very important NPC that will make our lives in Caled much easier. Um, now, before you come here, real fast, uh, make sure it is not nighttime. If it's nighttime when you roll up on here, 
there is going to be a uh, bell bearing hunter waiting and perhaps the most dangerous bell bearing hunter in the game is extremely hard he will well, obliterate you at this point in the game i'd highly suggest you avoid him but this merchant in particular has something that we really want and that is the beast repellent torch so i'm going to go ahead and buy that up i'm going to also pick up a ritual pot just because those are good to have um sacrificial twig or two these are actually really useful as well um, I'll buy one of those just so I can explain how it works and demonstrate. And we are going to warp back to Dragon Barrow West. Alright, now the next thing we're going to do is... We're actually going around there, but right around over here, there is a dragon that we are going to lure to get us a couple of upgrade mats that when we combine those upgrade mats with what we're going to be getting in the next cave we go into, we'll have enough to bring our weapon up to the next tier. So right over here, we can see a statue, and we need a way to break open this statue. So what we are going to do, uh, I'd suggest using just a regular throwing dagger. And see there's a dragon or drake right over here this will take take a little bit of time to do probably about a minute or so i'm just going to do it in, in in real time just so you can see exactly how i get him over here he's not the brightest dragon come on I'm right over here come get me So this is the next part. It's how to train your dragon. He is going to slowly walk after me. And we can't get too far from him because if we get too far, he is going to de-aggro. So I like to throw a knife at him every now and again just to let him know I'm still interested. And we're going to bring him all the way on over there. And he is going to pop that statue for us and give us some much needed upgrade mats. gonna walk right on up gonna grab that and then we're just gonna run i think he actually despawned because we got him so far from where he was supposed to be but that works out uh so back to the kalem ruins we go we just wanted to go ahead and pick those up because we're going to be getting a lot of those smithing stones uh, in the upcoming crystal tunnel that we're doing and now what we're actually going to do is a full path all the way around so uh, there's going to be like a grace that's right around here should be one right around here we have this and then I believe the last one is right about here. It's a little bit off the path, um, but you can you can very clearly see the the road right here, and we are just going to stay along that road. Right over here, we have one of my favorite dragon fights, Zeke's. Uh, this is the dragon that you get rot breath from spell that a lot of people are really big fans of lets you uh, breathe rot out so you're doing solid damage and then on top of that you're causing the target to have a long lasting damage over time effect um, you can certainly try and fight him right now if you want uh, i would um, i think it's worth worth probably getting these last couple of races in the maps first but i'll grab that map of caleb and we're gonna just talk to him real fast another merchant uh, some stone sword keys some cracked pots great helm i'm a big fan of this helm i just really like the aesthetics of it you don't have to buy the great helm it doesn't actually do anything i just really like how it looks so uh, we're gonna ride on over though to our last spot which we marked which is going to be a little bit before that there's that grace go ahead and grab that And then from uh, that grace, we're actually just going to go right here, pretty much just northwest. Past those enemies. And there it is. A couple goodies just sitting here for us to pick up. Some extra smithing stone fours, some sacramental buds, and a rune arc. And those sacramental buds, those are one of the rare objects that you need to, uh, to make the preserving boluses. So, certainly worth grabbing them. So, going over to item crafting. 
As you can see, I just need some crystal cave moss, which we're going to be coming up on a location to get some of that. Uh, so, a couple things I'd like to point out now that we have Caleb fully uncovered. Uh, there are a couple night bosses in Caleb, right along this path right here. There is a night rider uh, directly across from us over here, which is this area. There can be a death bird at night. And then, as we already mentioned, up here at the isolated merchant's shack is a ball bearing hunter. So just be aware of those three enemies if you are exploring Caleb at night. Um, some other things, the, the divide right here, this large crevice, think of this as the divide for upper Caleb and lower Caleb. Uh, this large area here is just for a boss, so lower Caled should be thought of as everything below that, that kind of diagonal I just drew. And then upper Caled is the Dragon Barrow, this area up here to the Bestial Sanctum. You can go up there if you want, things are much more dangerous, much higher level. Um, to put things in perspective, up in uh, up here, up, up in the upper Caled, you'll, you'll get things like... Uh, you know, level 8, level 9 smithing stones, which is you know, a few tiers past where we're at right now. Uh, so while you can go up there, it's not really worth it for the time being. Uh, the next thing that we're going to actually do is we're going to run right past here, which is actually a side quest that I'll briefly talk about. And we're going to get over here into that cavern, which is going to be the next cave that I want us to knock out. Now this is the... Uh, Celia, the city of sorcery. There is a whole side quest that you can do here if you want. Uh, you can also just run straight through it. There is, is a boss that pops up, uh, but this whole area is essentially optional. And that's the thing with Caleb is Caleb is, is very vast, uh, but a lot of Caleb is completely optional and you don't need to worry about it. Um, one thing I would like to show so we went all the way up north to pick up uh, an item earlier. The beast repellent torch and the reason for that is because of exactly what it does you can see how this dog stopped attacking us now if i put the torch away the dog is going to re-aggro and it's going to try and bite me hit me with some rot breath if i pull the torch back out the dog is just passively hanging out uh, this is a unique effect of this as you can see a torch which burns with oil infused with the special incense the aroma pacifies wild beasts and one of the scarier things about Caled are these these incredibly large dogs or the incredibly large crows. Uh, so that is is why I wanted to take y'all up north early on. Just having that in an offhand will greatly increase your chances of survivability while you're out here in Caled. So we're gonna just run slightly to the left here. Uh, we're just kind of juking the the city. You know, I don't want to. There's there's a lot of uh, mage type enemies in there. I'm not really interested in fighting any of them, so we're just going to bypass it, and we're going to make our way on over to that marker that we made. We will grab this grace right here. Just another checkpoint along our Caleb journey. And then right over here. There we go. Rotten Strength. Uh, so a decent, decent Spear Dash. It's not very strong. But it can inflict rot on targets, so that's another one that a lot of people are, are fans of. I like to get it early on and then count on that to do a... You know, the idea is you rot the boss, and then even if the stray dies, the boss is going to slowly tick down if you run away. But I'm a bigger fan of just getting in solid damage, so... Alright, we're going to go ahead and swap back to our Brick Hammer. We're going to also put on our lantern. Uh, and this is the Celia Crystal Tunnels. Which if we get through this, it doesn't take too long. We'll actually be able to get through this quite quickly. Um, but there's a lot more upgrade mats that we'll pick up while we're in here, which is the main reason we're doing it. Now uh, There are a couple enemies that I want to point out that we're going to go after first, which is why I'm just running past everything. Uh, there's a couple... It's just men of pus that are kind of waiting. And we want to take them out because they have ranged attacks. So it shouldn't take too long. A couple of solid hits. Grab that 
rune arc. Go ahead and kill all these poor guys now. Some smithing stone fives. Here, grab that. There's the, there's the last mana pus. With the three of them dead, we can pretty much just go around and uh, kill the rest of the miners. After you have cleared out, we're actually going to jump right back over here where we killed that first mana pus. We'll follow that path around. Oh, you can drop down and get that later, but I always try and get it off the jump. I think five. We're going to round the corner here. Always good just to check all the walls that you see when you're in caves because it's very easy to, to overlook a smithing stone. Uh, so if you want that that item that I pointed out earlier, this is where you get it. You can drop on down. I don't remember it being anything that's really of value there. There we go. Can't have you skittering around. Rock Blaster over here. Pick up some more smithing stones. And as soon as you come up, just go ahead and kick this down. It's a nice shortcut ladder, so if you do die, uh, you can get back over here quite quickly. Uh, next up, we are going to be ambushed, so be ready for that. Let's see that piece of loot. Look around the corner. Just waiting to get you. Grab that. We'll grab the Dragon Moon Grease. And then we'll ahead and take these guys out. It's a uh, nice talisman for faith builds. It'll increase the damage of your spells. I think we have all of the upgrades. So, open this on up. We're going to be introduced to a, another type of boss that you haven't fought, but you'll see quite a lot of. This is a Falling Star Beast. Uh, now, these enemies are... I'm going to actually use our die hammer here. These enemies, think of them like a, a bull that's made of obsidian. They will turn, they will charge, uh, they are fairly dangerous, um, but for the most part, you can usually get some solid damage in. 
They're weaker on the tail or on the helmet, but they do control gravity, so they'll pick you up in the air. Uh, they can make you fly up in the air, they can kick you up in the air, they can throw things at you. But for the most part, the biggest thing is just looking for a good opportunity and trying to hit uh, these enemies. They don't have any one particular weakness, so they are very much just a hit it and, and try and do what you can type enemy. Very resilient. Uh, you'd think they would actually be weaker to blunt, but they're not. Uh, but like all enemies, if you can get them stunned, you can go on up and get a nice juicy critical. It's actually kind of a, a baby. There's multiple versions of these you'll encounter in your time in Elden Ring. Ooh, another stun on it. Poor thing. And the reason this kill is so important is you'll notice on top of getting a bunch of Smithing Stone 7s, we have acquired the Somber Stone Miner's Bell Bearing, which we can give this on over to the Finger Maiden, and it will unlock a bunch of stones for us. But after finishing that, we're going to go ahead and head on back. We picked up a bunch of upgrades. By the time we're, we're done with uh, this in the next part, we'll actually be looking pretty good on upgrades. I believe up to 16 or possibly 17. Go here, and we will strengthen that up. All we need now are some Smithing Stone 6s. Uh, so this is where we are going to wrap things up. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to tackle two more areas in Caleb. In particular, we're going to work our way down south over here, which is uh, the Fort Gale. And then after that, we are going to work our way on over here to Castle Redmain. So make sure to stay tuned. We're going to be kicking things off more than likely just from, uh, from Rot View or from Smoldering Wall. Um, but yeah, stay tuned, and we will catch you soon as we continue.